I just finished delivering an ADA and EC4 ECC PMA training course to a group of people. Lovely, lovely, brilliant people. Experienced project managers, QSS directors, and I love doing this. Now, some of you would like me to utilize this YouTube channel to go through some of the fundamental concepts that we have already gone through during the training course. And it is understandable because you have four days and it's almost impossible to absorb all the information like during that four days. Now I break down some of the fundamental concepts and put it here and hopefully that will be helpful for you. So if that is you, you want me to talk about any fundamental concepts that you want to know more, type that in the comment section and I will find some time to do it. So let's do it. This time around, let's talk about payment. How to pay the contractor is very easy. The equation is, is amount due equals price for work done to date plus and minus. Sometimes I will say AD equals PWDD plus and minus. The reason why you may find some of these uh, concepts in NEC4 regarding payment being so confusing is simply there are so, just too many terms. For example, you have activity schedule, then you have bill of quantities, then you have defined cost, then you have fee, then you have different value engineering percentage, you have share percentage, share ranges, then you have prices, total of the prices, amount deal, change in amount deal, small letter T total of the prices, big letter T total of the prices. So it's, it's like a mess in there. But let me just tell you, all these different terms, they all boil down into this equation, especially price for work done to date. So let's start by talking about price for work done to date. It simply means the price that you will pay the contractor for the work that they have done up to that date. We call that price for work done to date. It's very similar to your monthly salary. If you are an employee, you know. So what is your monthly salary? Your monthly salary is the price that your employer has paid you for the work that you have done for that month up to your payment date. And you call that monthly salary. In NEC4 here, we don't call that monthly salary. We call that price for work done to date. So it's just a name. Nothing too special, it's just a name. Then we need to drill deeper now. PWDD or price for work done to date depends on different options. Option A, B, C, D, E, and F. And by the way, these different options here simply means there are different ways to, play, to pay the contractor. Six ways to pay the contractor. Let's label them A, B, C, D, E, and F. So for A, activity schedule. Price for work done today comes from an activity schedule. Then what is an activity schedule? It's an, it's, it's an Excel table showing different activities and for each activity you've got a number to pay the contractor and let's call that number a price for that activity if that is completed 100 percent you pay the contractor 100 percent if that activity is completed 50 percent you do not pay the contractor so how to pay the contractor for option a is simply like looking up the list and check what type of activities or which activity the contractor has already completed, you pay that accordingly. Halfly completed, do not pay. Not completed, do not pay. And that is A. B, BQ. So it's easy to remember. A, AS, activity schedule. B, BQ. What is a BQ? A BQ is a bill of quantity showing different items in them with different quantities and rates. So if you multiply the quantity with the rate, then of course that will be the price. So for each item, if the contractor has completed 100%, you pay them 100%. For each item, if the contractor has, has completed 80%, then you do 80%. If the contractor has completed 140%, then you remeasure that of course and make it 140%. And that is why for B, we call that a remeasurement or remeasurement contract. Some people call that a measurement contract. 
and it is as a certain as a certain um, uh, situation when this change in the final total quantity of work done will be so huge that the change will become a compensation event. I do have another video talking about this one, specifically for clause 60.4. So how about C now? C, price for work done today comes from defined cost and fee. So what is a defined cost and fee? Defined cost, that term, simply means some cost item defined under the contract. Where in the contract? Schedule of cost component. So in that schedule of cost component, you will find a list of items for the contractor to apply for the cost that they have paid for the work, and we simply call that the defined cost. If you go to a supermarket, you pay something by the cost. No one will sell you anything. You, you are paying the price. So by the same token here, you don't pay the contractor just by defined cost. You need to add something on it, and we call that the fee. How to calculate the fee? You multiply the defined cost by a certain percentage, and you got that fee. Let's call that percentage a fee percentage. How about D now? Dog. Option D, instead of using a bill of quantities as in option B, you use defined cost and fee to calculate the PWDD, same as option C. So one question, very common, especially if you are new in NEC 4 or 3, you will ask, then what is the use of an activity schedule for option C then? The answer is, it is used to calculate the target. The contract says, let's compare that target with whatever defined cost and fee that you have come up with, which means let's compare that target, which is a number, with the total PWDD. The contract says let's share the pain and gain. Same for option D. Let's compare the target with the total PWDD. The contract says let's share the difference. If the PWDD is higher than the target, then it is pain. If it is lower than the target, then it is gain. Contract says, let's share the pain and gain by a certain percentage. And let's call that a share percentage. If that is a percentage, it must be within a certain range. So let's call that range a share range. And we have multiple percentages. We have multiple ranges. And therefore, we have share percentages and share ranges. So that is D. How about E? E, emergency. E, cost reimbursable, plus the fee, of course. So why do I say emergency? It's simply because sometimes some of the contract, the client may not exactly know what the scope should be. And therefore, it's sort of like an emergency situation whereby I don't even know what exactly the scope is. Just do the thing. I will pay you the cost. On top of that, I will pay you a certain fee. And therefore, we call that we call that cost reimbursable contract. But in fact, it's cost reimbursable plus fee contract. So that is E. Then how to pay the contractor? Do not get carried away. Still the same equation. AD equals PWDD plus and minus. Then PWDD from option, for option E will be defined cost and fee. Same principle with option C and D. The difference here is, in option E, you do not have a target, and therefore we do not talk about activity schedule or BQ. How about F? F, management contract. Sometimes I call that, I don't bother type of contract. The client may not exactly know what they want, and they pretty much don't bother how you do it, but they want it good. So that is management contract. They give the contractor full power to manage the contract. How to pay the contractor? Defines cost and fee, same as option E. We do not have a target, and therefore we do not we do not use activity schedule and bill quantities. And in option F, because that is management contract, we don't even need to have a schedule of cost components to define the defined cost. And that is AD equals PWDD plus and minus the PWDD part. Then. What is plus and what is minus? It simply means I will look at your work, I will add something into it, or I will take away something. 
For example, I add something like interest payment, or I take away something like delay damages, like retention. So it's an adjustment. It's like your monthly salary. Your employer says, well, this is the basic monthly salary. I'm going to adjust it according to a certain criteria. So that is the plus and minus bit. Then PWD plus and minus, you come up with 18 among deal. Among deal. Now, in NEC4 in here, what should be the number in the payment certificate? The payment certificate should show the change in the amount due. So month one, you have amount due one. Month two, you have amount due two. In the payment certificate, the change of the amount due, which means AD2 minus AD1 will be the change. You pay the contractor accordingly. Therefore, that equation, when I say AD equals PWDD plus and minus, to put it more exact or more accurate, it should be the net amount due. That net amount due or change in amount due will appear in the payment certificate, and that amount should appear in the bank. When? One week after the assessment date, payment certificate. Three weeks after the assessment date, cash in the bank. Late payment, interest. What type of interest? Compound interest. And that is pretty much the whole picture or most of the picture for this payment concept in here. Some other details, but do not get carried away, uh, uh, away by, the, by those details. Leave the details to the experts. At least for the assessment sake, you know these basic fundamental concepts, then you are good to go. Let me know what type of other topics you want me to talk about, and I will make similar videos in the days to come. Good luck, everyone.